Today we're going to be talking about Meet Kairos. I, I mean, for those who have already seen us at the booth, Meet Kairos again, the meta, the meta distribution for the edge. So um, when we talk about meta distribution, what, uh, what do we mean? Um, we understand that different teams use different um, Linux operating systems. For example, Alpine, OpenSUSE, and Fedora. And we do not want to reinvent the wheel. I mean, all those operating systems already do a great job at um, providing great packet, package managers and everything that they do. So we don't want to ask you to change your operating system. So, uh, and we also understand the fact that companies have invested so many years into um, learning how to use these operating systems. So Kairos is not asking you to change any of this. Aside that, um, different organizations have licenses that they use, and you don't want to do away with that. There are also, for people that don't have licenses, you might have golden images. And those golden images, like um, some of the templates and the standardization that your team makes use of, you don't want to do away with that. So that's not what um, Kairos is asking you to do. Kairos actually builds on top of what you have already. A lot of um, our computing is moving to the edge, which means that um, we want to move away from um, centralized uh, data centers and then move our workloads to closer to the customers uh, or closer to our clients. And for real-time processing and all the advantages that uh, the edge provides, we've, we are gradually moving to more to the edge and then less towards data centers. So um, because our devices and our workloads are moving closer to our customers, there are a lot of challenges that this comes with. And some of these challenges include security. I mean, so when your computer is, or sorry, or when your computing is closer to the customer, there's increased vulnerability. Um, it can be tampered with easily. And there's also the case of stability. So if a user wants to make an upgrade or make an update, you want the user to still be able to make use of that edge device without having any issues. So the, the case of stability also comes in. And then there's deployment, right? Everybody wants a plug and play. Nobody wants to go through all the deployment hassles. And like companies also want you to be able to like have very easy deployment um, experiences. So um, these are some of the issues that come with having your devices or your, com your computing closer to the customer or in the edge. So um, Kairos to the rescue. Um, so for security, right, one of the ways in which Kairos solves this problem is by immutability. This means that all the OS components and like including the kernel and in its RD are immutable. Like you, all, you can only read, you can't write. However, Kairos also provides like a persistent, like where you can persist your data and you can always update this part of Kairos. And then um, when you think about it, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, it doesn't mean that this other part can be tampered with, and that's not the case. Um, Kairos actually provides security by um, encrypting this user data part, encrypting it in T TPM chips, and this means that if for some reason your hard disk, for example, is stolen, you cannot, the decryption cannot happen except on the same computer that, um, on which it was encrypted. So the user actually needs your physical device to be able to decrypt that data. So um, Kairos provides the security both on the OS level and then on your persistent volumes. And then for um, stability, Kairos also provides alpha beta upgrades. And what this means is that you have your running image, which is your active image, and you want to make an upgrade to another, another like make an upgrade, and then that upgrade that you want to make, um, we call it the passive one. 
So um, Kairos downloads the newer image that you want to update to, and um, there's a transition phase where um, after the download, Kairos tries to reboot your device and then loads the image of, loads the new image which you've downloaded, and if there's any issue, um, it's going to switch back to the previous image, and this is how it provides um, stability. So I'm going to allow Mauro to continue from here. Yeah, and uh, of course, even if we try to make everything as simple and resilient as possible, we know as engineers that stuff, b bad stuff can happen, right? For those scenarios where for some reason uh, neither the active or the passive image uh, is working properly, we offer also a recovery partition in which you can uh, have a shell and try to either fix one of those two images that is broken or at least get a hold of your data and save it, right? Um, another interesting feature that comes with Kairos is what we call a peer-to-peer -peer network with self-coordinated cluster bootstrap. Uh, what does this mean? Well, there's this component that we introduced called Edge VPN. It's basically a mix of a VPN uh, ledger, and what it does is that every node that you install with this component is going to keep record of every other node which you provided with the same uh, kind of key. Um, and, and these nodes are, use, are running on top of the lib peer-to-peer Library, that means that if for some reason there is uh, limited connectivity, some protocols are not working, you can make use of any other protocol that the live peer-to-peer uh, library offers. This can be useful because some of the uh, edge locations, you know, might be restricted in the kind of uh, connectivity that you have there. So I don't know, if for some reason TCP is not working, uh, maybe the web sockets are available and the nodes can continue speaking to each other there. And uh, another way in which this is useful is, let's say that I'm, I want to uh, install, install a cluster and I decide to have, for example, uh, two master nodes and the rest can be uh, workers. Uh, but of course, uh, one of our master nodes stop working for some reason. Then what happens is that because every node has uh, the ability to know about the others, then they will start to communicate communicate between each other and with consensus decide, you know what, we we lost one of the master nodes, so now I'm going to become master node and again update this ledger that each of these nodes had in its own, so that at the end of the day you continue having the stability, uh, for, in, in this case for example if you want to provide a high availability on that particular uh, cluster. Of course, if at some point that other master node comes back online, he's going to be able to talk to all of them and again decide whether it stays as a master node or if downgrades uh, as, a, as a worker. Um, what else? Uh, another thing that we want to do, like we were mentioning, is uh, make, make it easy to deploy. And uh, one of the things we provide here is that uh, Kairos is easy to configure and maintain. Uh, what we use right now is uh, Cloud Init for the configuration of those nodes. So all your configuration can be done via YAML um, files. That means that you can keep it in your um, GitHub repositories, keep track of the changes that that, um, that that configuration is having throughout time. And as you can see here, this is of course a very, very simple configuration, but you can get an idea of how it works. You just have... Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the number of users that I want to install, I, have, I want the uh, user Kairos, is going to have the password Kairos, and also on top of that, uh, I'm gonna tell that this user can get the GitHub SSH key from the user called Modeler, and also maybe uh, um, an, S an SSH key that I provided there. And uh, finally, in this case, for example, I'm enabling the use of K3S. So that means that this node will have the full uh, API capabilities of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, another way in which we try to make it easy uh, to deploy is that we provide a web uh, interface so that uh, the only thing that you have to do is if you know the IP of one of the nodes, 
you go in this case, for example, to that IP uh, and the 8080 port, and you will see a um, website where you can just copy paste the configuration that you want installed for that node, and then you run it, and by the time it's done, your system is gonna be configured uh, to the like of that configuration. Um, some cases, being at the edge, you have some particular scenarios. Maybe the person that is uh, in possession, physical possession of the node doesn't have, um, um, you don't want them to have the full configuration of the node itself. And in those scenarios, what we provide is that as soon as the, uh, the machine is booted, uh, uh, it will show a QR code, and then the person just needs to take a picture. Then they can send this picture to your headquarters or however you, you're doing this, and the person in the headquarters is gonna, with the simple use of a CLI tool, in this case the Cairo CTL, is going to register that node. And it's going, you're, as you can see here, I'm going to provide what is the configuration file that I want and uh, provide the QR code. And just by that, I don't need to pass an IP or anything else. It's going to know how to, conf to connect to it. Another interesting component that we provide, also useful when you're doing uh, deployments, is uh, something that we call Aurora Boot. Let's say that for some reason you want to send a couple of clusters to different places across the country uh, to build these clusters in, 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 I don't know, different parking lots or uh, grocery stores, whatever it is that your business is, right? And, uh, but, but you don't want to go send a person, do the full configuration in the place, and then go back. It could be very expensive, or it could take too long. And for that scenario, what you might want to do is do some uh, net, net booting uh, configuration. You just spin up Aurora Boot, and then uh, as you tell it which image you want to install, again, which configuration you want for that image, and... Um, then every machine that you start in the same network is via Pixie Boot is going to be uh, configured to have that specific setup that you set for it. Then, of course, you just unplug all those devices, put them in boxes, and send them to the locations that they need to be. The next time that they boot is going to be with the proper configuration that you were expecting to have. So, do you want to? <laughs> so, to. Finalize, uh, we think Kairos is a great uh, solution for edge computing because just to summarize the little things that we mentioned right now, it's immutable and uh, that means that uh, we reduce the risk surface that an attacker will have. It's distribution agnostic, so we allow you to continue using your existing knowledge on whatever uh, main distribution of Linux that you are using. We do AB upgrades so to facilitate and to avoid uh, ending up with a system that is not working after an upgrade. Um, we have TPN encryption to add security on the um, user data that you uh, have there. We have peer-to-peer -peer networking so that uh, communication between the nodes is as easy and simple as possible and uh, as reliant as well because of the peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, library. And uh, finally, it's easy to configure and maintain. And last but not least, let us do a quick demo. Uh, I would have loved to do a live demo, but you know, the risk of uh, this not going properly, right? <laughs> so instead, I decided to go for a video. Uh, I'll move this so that you continue listening to me. And what we're going to do here is that uh, we're going to create five nodes. And I'm, these five nodes all together are going to become a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster. And uh, I will be skipping because uh, you don't need to see, uh, wait for everything that is happening. And then uh, once I create those machines in my uh, data center, uh, I am going to spin up Aurora Boot. Here, you can see that Aurora, uh, Aurora Boot can be run from a container or you can install it on your machine. And I'm going to pass uh, this YAML is the configuration YAML that I was de just describing before. It has uh, K3S configuration. And in this particular case, I also mentioned that I want to have three master nodes from the five machines. Uh, and that's it. We let it continue for a bit. 
And what Aurora Boot is doing right now is it's downloading uh, an image from the cloud. This can be one of the images that we provide or one that you built with Kairos. And it's going to copy the root FS into uh, your local system or in the container, depending on which of the two versions you used. And the final result that it does is uh, an ISO image that will be delivered via the Pixie Boot um, configuration, uh, net via the network. And now we're going to start spinning up the VMs. So you can see here we can start them in parallel. They are all in the same network, so they are all going to start getting the same configuration. And I'm going to launch a remote console so that we can see what is happening in the node. Here on the left, you see Aurora Boot receiving already all those connections from the different VMs. And uh, that uh, smaller window is the VM that spin, spin up, and it's already receiving uh, Aurora Boot instructions on how to in configure and install this uh, node. And let's make it go a bit faster. That way there's more room for questions. Um, yeah, we open consoles on all of them so that you can see that everything is happening in parallel. You don't need to wait uh, in serial for each of these to be configured. Um, let's go faster. This part is a bit slow. Yeah, and you can see that one of the nodes uh, at this point is already booting. Uh, I think I went a bit too far. Yes. So you can see that there is grub, and uh, it's a bit small maybe, but there you can see that we have the option to just boot Kairos, to go into the fallback, which is the description that we were saying about the AB um, upgrade. So if there's some issue with the uh, current image, you can fall back to the previous one that was running. The recovery one, in case every, all, the two A and B are broken, so that you can try to... Um, fixed things, and the rest of the nodes, of course, are also going to start booting at some point. And here in this, um, in this uh, screen back here, we can see that Kairos already booted, booted for that particular um, machine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into one of the machines and uh, using the Kairos agent inside the machine, we're going to fetch the information on how to connect to that cluster. So for that, what we use is uh, a command uh, called get kubeconfig. And this gives me all the information of that configuration, which then I could uh, either all of these images come with K9S as well, so you could do it from that uh, node, but just to show you uh, that I also can do it from my machine, all that needs to be done is copy that uh, configuration, save it locally, and then point our cube config to that configuration. Then we start K9S. It's going to communicate with the cluster that we just spin up, and now we can see it there. And next step, we can see how we have five machines. The five have been uh, registered in the cluster. Three of them, the first two and the last one, are masters, like uh, we defined. And two of them are uh, workers. And uh, just like uh, we can do anything that can be done at this point with a Kubernetes cluster, like showing up the pods and see traffic there or any other service, kubebeep, uh, anything like that. And that's pretty much for the demo. As you can see, it's uh, relatively simple to uh, set up a complete Kubernetes cluster um, on, on your edge devices. So now I would like to give you guys time for questions. Is there any question out there? Sorry? Immutable. 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 Immutable.
immutable. Yes, that's you're asking if the images are immutable. That's correct. So uh, the the um, what we make is that um, the um, root partition. So uh, and and all your configurations, like everything on their Etsy directory and all of that, is is not going to be able to to be changed because it's uh, mounted read only. And on top of that, like uh, so what some distributions do is that they uh, create the init RAMFS at the moment of in doing the installation. And uh, the problem with that is that uh, during that step, you could be at risk. But uh, what we do is that we create the init RAMFS at the moment of building the image. So at that point, you're still within your network, right? Within your safe environment to a certain degree. And once you have it uh, installed in the system, it, in, even the re init RAMFS is uh, uh, read-only. And same thing for the boot uh, uh, partition. Anyone else? Yep. Yeah, uh, at the moment we, sorry, I'm going to repeat the question. Uh, so which um, flavors or which distributions are supported with Kairos? And uh, at the moment we have, uh, as you were mentioning, Ubuntu. We have um, uh, Alpine Linux. We have Fedora. We have uh, Rocky Linux. Uh, yesterday someone uh, coming to the booth asked me if we could make it work with Alma. Uh, Linux, which is uh, very similar to the Red Hat family, as you were asking, turned out uh, just changing two, three files very simply uh, made it work there. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Red Hat, yes, uh, but of course with Red Hat, you're probably using licensing. So then there's this additional step that you have to do, but it's, it's basically uh, supported since we have uh, Rocky Linux and, and um, Fedora there. And uh, we're happy to try to introduce more distributions if people are interested in them, of course. The basic requirement that we need is, uh, right now, our two types of uh, systems are um, uh, SystemD and OpenRC. Um, and ideally, glibc, but of course, for example, with Alpine, we only get access to Mussel. So uh, it, it will really depend what your distribution offers uh, for, for us to do the transition. Anyone else? Well, if it's not the case, then thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you have still any other questions or you want to try uh, Kairos out, uh, we have our website where is all the documentation and the different uh, uh, image matrix that we support. Uh, there's also our GitHub repository. Um, we also have Matrix and Slack channels where you can make questions. Uh, and uh, finally, we have uh, office hours. We meet uh, at 5.30 every Wednesday uh, European time. So if you just want to pop up, say hi, or you know, tell us what is missing in Kairos, please do, and we'll be happy to try to make it better. Thank you.